Hello, it's Bill, the knee pain guru. Today's Monday, January 31st, 2022. Today we're going to talk about knees. We're going to talk about ACL, ACL reconstruction and meniscus repair. Near and dear to my heart. Okay, this was my injury. So let's see what we got here. We got a question here from Not Bruz. <laughs> they write, hey, I had an ACL reconstruction and a meniscus repair. It's been six weeks from surgery. And I got went to my check and they told me I'm behind on bending my knee to 90 degrees. They gave me an extra size to do, sit on a high surface and force my knee to bend to 90. But it hurts like hell. Is it normal? If I continue to do it, will it get better and eventually be at 90 degrees? Um, the, the, the direct answer is maybe. And th this, once again, this was the injury that I had. And there was, it was a little bit more complicated to get full range of motion in a knee after ACL reconstruction and meniscus repair than just forcing the knee to bend. And this is something that I found out, um, over several years after my injury and the surgery. Uh, first of all, you're, what is, I have not seen it talked about yet. If there is somebody out there that talks about this, the, the neurological signaling uh, from a Western medicine perspective, I'd love to talk to somebody who addresses the neurological signaling that comes from the brain, the spinal column, the nerves that go out to all the cells in our body. The Western medical model looks at it. Um, the Western medical model looks at it very uh, black and white in essence. They're looking at it that you got to strengthen the muscles in the legs. You got to force the knee to increase the range of motion to break down the scar tissue. And what ends up happening is there's like a white elephant in the room that's not being talked about, that's not being addressed. And this is what I'm bringing to the table right here, that yes, you can force the knee into a range of motion, but on some level, the neurology, neurology means your pain receptors are saying, hey, I don't want to go in that range of motion. We're going to stop right here. And that's what ends up happening. And people get behind the curve in their progress with their knee, not because they're doing anything wrong. And the docs and the physical therapists are following everything that they've been told according to the, to the textbooks that have been written. But what isn't being addressed and what isn't being talked about is this neurological response that lets the body know not to go there. And that's what needs to be addressed in order to get, uh, to reduce the pain and increase the range of motion. So uh, <clears throat> until that, those patterns are addressed, what ends up happening is you get in a very, um, you're, you're kind of like a, running on a hamster wheel. You got to force the knee to increase the range of motion, but the more, more you force the knee to increase the range of motion, you cause more pain, which causes the knee to tense up more and not wanting to be forced into that range of motion. But the conventional model is saying, well, force the knee into the range of motion. So you get into this circular loop that you're not getting any answers for. And this is where we need to take a step back and come from a higher perspective. Like Einstein said, a problem can't be solved on the, on the, at the same level the problem was created. We have to come from a higher level, a higher understanding in order to address that, what's going on with the knee on a physical level. So by coming from the neurological perspective and calming the tension in the nervous system, getting the pressure off of the nerves in the knee that are causing the pain, now what happens is the nervous system starts to drop, drop, um, it isn't so hyper alert. The range of motion begins to increase in the joint. 
not because we're forcing it, but because we're getting the pressure off of the nerves that are causing the pain, that are causing the tension, that are causing the knee to tense up to protect an anticipation of the pain. We change that neurological signaling. We send different signals throughout the knee, the leg, the rest of the body. And now the range of motion can begin to increase in the leg. And then all those other things begin to come online. So that, that's kind of the bigger picture. What, um, oh, make sure to give the video a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications for future videos because I do these Monday through Friday, once per day, answering the questions that you either type in the live chat or you put in the comments section. This allows me for topics for future videos. So um, <clears throat> with that being said as the foundation to understand how to increase the range of motion in the knee without forcing it, without causing more pain, I need to share my own personal experience with ACL reconstruction and meniscus repair. There was a, uh, when I blew out my knee, I was at the last time, I did it four times. Yes, my learning curve was a little flat. We teach what we need to learn most. So the last time I blew out my knee, I was throwing to first base. Uh, short stop, field at a ground ball, through, through to first base. And the leg rotated, it popped, I ended up on the ground. My neurology locked into that position. External rotation of the lower part of the leg. There was an internal rotation of the bone in the upper leg. So it was like this opposing pattern that tore the ligament um, in the knee, the ACL in the knee. Did the surgery, did the physical therapy, and was trying to get my heel to my butt. I was trying to get the full range of motion in the knee. However, it was resisting. My leg was resisting that range of motion because of the pain and because of this opposing pattern in the bones. Once I got that opposing pattern in the bones addressed, the range of motion came back very quickly, very quickly in, in the knee. Uh, it also, there's a very, very direct connection between the range of motion in the knee, as well as what's going on in the hips and lower back. So the more we could free those patterns up, the more the range of motion came back. It was, uh, it was relatively easy to get that range of motion back, both extension and flexion. Anyhow, um, if that makes sense, give the video a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications for future videos. Share this video with your family, friends, and loved ones that are uh, struggling with issues with their knees. Um, let's see. Action steps you can take on the other side of this. One is you can uh, give us a call. I have an 800 number, 877-891-9484, that you can call to speak with someone uh, about your knee. And then you can also uh, get a complimentary membership to, to my Knee Club Light program, which is my group coaching program. You can check that out at the kneepainguru.com. All of this information is in the description box below. You can check that out uh, if you aren't going to uh, or if you don't want to ask questions. And put those in the comments section. Um, so those are options you have in order to get more support or help. If you'd like, uh, I have a short video to share with you that you can check out here. And this shows a little bit more about my group coaching program, Knee Club. So I'm going to play that video in just for a second. This is Bill Paravano, the Knee Pain Guru. going to sign off for today. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.